A new study has found that some of the oldest rocks on the planet are the result of asteroids slamming to the primordial Earth, causing its rocks to melt. The findings, reported in the journal Nature Geoscience, show that Earth's oldest evolved or granitic rocks, which form part of the Acastogenes complex in northwest Canada, have compositions that are quite distinct from those typical of Earth's ancient continental crust. And these differences suggest that they form through a very different process. The study's lead author, Dr. Tim Johnson from Curtin University, says the melting of these rocks at such shallow levels is most easily explained by meteorite impacts, which would have supplied the energy to attain the extreme temperatures required for melting. The authors used computer modelling to show that the rocks were produced by the partial melting of iron-rich hydrated basaltic rocks at very low pressures, equivalent to the uppermost few kilometres of the crust. The simulations of asteroid impact show that not only is this scenario physically plausible, but the region of shallow partial melting needed to form these ancient evolved rocks would have been widespread. Given the predicted high flux of meteorites which bombarded the Earth around 4 billion years ago, impact melting may well have been the predominant mechanism that generated granitic rocks at that time. Earth's Hadean and earliest Archean eons between 4.5 and 3.9 billion years ago were dominated by a barrage of asteroid impacts known as the Late Heavy Bombardment, which would have caused widespread melting and recycling of the planet's surface. Consequently, there are almost no rocks preserved from Earth's formative Hadean eon. The only known evolved rocks from the Hadean are those in northwestern Canada, and they have chemical compositions clearly distinct from those which dominate ancient continental crusts worldwide. And that, says Tim Johnson, suggests that they formed in a different way. The research really stemmed from me looking at some existing data. And these evolved rocks or granitic rocks in, in the Castanice province in, in northwest Canada just have chemical compositions that look just slightly odd. They're different from the granitic rocks that make up most of our ancient continents. And it just got me thinking about what their petrogenesis was, what formed them. So I did some uh, modelling to try and work out what minerals might have been present at various conditions within these rocks, basically as a function of their, their temperature and their pressure or their depth. And it turns out that the rocks, according to our calculations, could only have formed at very high temperatures, but at very low pressure, so at very shallow levels in the crust. And the only way of getting rocks at up to such high temperatures where they started to melt at such shallow levels, really, is by impact. So you need to put tremendous amounts of energy into the uppermost bits of the planet, and impact seemed a, the only plausible way to me of doing that. I take it that means that the heat of impact is, is much greater than, say, what you'd normally see with volcanic lava floating on the surface of the Earth. Oh, well, not necessarily, but the, but the, the granites that we see that make up the vast majority of our continents of course, um, because the llamas would be more basalts, wouldn't they? Exactly. So, so we're talking about these pale-coloured, felsic, granitic rocks. The vast majority of those in the continents we know were formed at depths of 20, 30 or 40 kilometres in the crust, where um, they were stable with a mineral called garnet. And that, that imparts a particular trace element signature, a fingerprint on the chemistry of the rocks. And that fingerprint is absent from these most ancient rocks. And the calculations suggest that rather than 20, 30, 40 kilometers depth, they probably formed in the uppermost three kilometers. So geologically speaking, that's very, very shallow. And as I said, to get, to get these rocks up to such high temperatures at su such shallow depths, impacts is the only really plausible mechanism of supplying that heat. And you've described these as possibly the oldest known evolved rocks on Earth. Firstly, I guess I need to find out what he's meant by evolved as opposed to any other type of rock. So the rocks that make up the scum of the Earth, the crust that we all live on, are subdivided really into two types. Very dark rocks, which are the basalts that you talked about earlier, and they're formed from the direct melting, the partial melting of the mantle, which is the, the layer underneath the crust. And the other type of crustal rocks we find are pale-coloured rocks or felsic rocks or granitic rocks, if you like. And that's what we mean by evolved. And granitic rocks in their most primitive form were formed from partial melting of, of basalts. And then you can reprocess those, remelt them to form even more evolved compositions, uh, which are the sorts of things that hold the mineral deposits that we all hold so dear and are so important to our um, economy. But by evolved, we really just mean pale-coloured granitic rock.